Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. What is move to actor? Here's our quick little example, which I realize I didn't set up. So let's set it up, and we'll walk through how I've set it up. Basically, I am having a move to actor example event inside of my character and I'm calling it when I spawn in my controller and my controller is going to talk to the move to actor node here and when we run it you'll see our little guy moves to our actor and then he'll stop and because I'm using a move to actor he will continue following my character until he successfully gets to it or is unable to move anymore like you can see here so let's go ahead and take a look at it our simple move to actor is our basic node. It takes in any controller and a goal and it moves the actor. The move to actor node without the simple part is slightly different. It takes in an AI controller, not just a regular controller, and it takes in a goal. Then you have a bunch of optional options, optional options, that's why they're called options. You have a bunch of options that allow you to tweak how it's going to use the navigation data. Now let's get started with one of the first important parts, the AI controller. The AI, AI controller you assign when you have created your pawn. In this case, I've set it up as a generic AI controller. And when you spawn in an AI or you spawn in the default controller for an AI, it's going to go ahead and assign your AI controller. If you don't have an AI controller assigned to your AI, none of this is going to work. So keep that in mind. You need a proper AI working in the first place. And in my case, I have a generic spawner, and I'm using the spawn AI from class to spawn in the enemy that you see. To get the AI controller, it's pretty simple. You can get a reference to the pawn that has an AI controller on it. In this case, it's myself because I'm inside the AI controller. And then use the get AI controller node. And that's going to return back an AI controller reference, and then use that as your target. For my goal, I'm simply setting up the player that I'm controlling so I have a valid moving target. Our options are going to be our an acceptable radius. How close does our player have to be? Sorry, how close does our goal have to be for us to get to before we stop? I've changed this to 100. Let's run a play. And you'll notice it stops farther away. We change it to something like 200. And we hit play. Let it run again, and you notice it stops farther. Based on your target's radius, you may want to adjust this acceptable radius based on the radius of your um, AI, the AI that you're controlling. You may want to go ahead and adjust it as well. We have our stop on overlap. That's basically going to allow it to add in the pawn's radius to our stopping to give us a little bit more room. It'll prevent you from, it prevents the AI from going inside of or on top of the exact destination by giving it extra radius. Use path finding is pretty simple. We hit play, we look at our character and we notice he's going around our obstacle. If we disable use path finding, he ignores the navigation data and he goes straight to our target. You'll notice he's still trying to get to me, but he's not going to go around our obstacle. And if I manage to get him around it, like that, you notice he may end up getting stuck on other sides as he's still trying. So that's what our use path finding is. Can strafe gives the character the ability to strafe as he is pathfinding. So rather than doing a fixed, oops, fell off. If I use can strafe and we look at it, it'll give it a little bit smoother movement as it's going around the corners. And while it's trying to track the player, can strafe disabled basically means you're only going to be able to turn around corners. You're not really going to be able to face the character and move left or right. Filter class is an advanced option. It's for navigation query data. If you've created some, you'll know you'll need it. And you can use this, for example, to eliminate certain things that you want to have as navigatable inside your pathfinding. Allow partial path is pretty simple. If you have a full path from your start to your finish, it's going to go ahead and use it. If allow partial path is turned on, and for example, 
It can get up to a ledge, but not to your player. Allow partial path will allow it to get up to that ledge and then stop as successful, rather than being able to completely not move due to not being able to have a complete path. So if you want to allow them to get as close as possible, you'll allow partial path. Our other big difference, simple move to actor, just takes in the inputs and gives us no outputs. We really don't know what happens unless we check in a different way. Move to actor gives us an enum of an epath following request result, which tells us if it was successful or not when it fires off the event. That is a key. This is not when it finishes. If you notice, there's no completed node here. That's another video for another node, which we'll cover. This just simply is a fire and forget movement that is successful when it starts or fails when it starts. If we run this, you'll notice it says request successful at the top left. If I move my character out of range, you'll notice it now says failed and our character, no, our AI no longer moves. It cannot navigate to me because if I do show navigation, uh, which is really annoying, I hate showing navigation inside of, it's, it's, yes, you should show navigation. Oh, it's like navigation mesh or something. I hate finding it. If, anyways, if we go back in here, you'll notice navigation mesh is only on one side. Once I jump over here, it no longer has a valid mesh and it fails. So it's gonna give us back a failure result, which I go ahead and print. So that's something nice to know. You can actually do an action based on the result, if it can find a path or not, and then maybe have it look for another path or do some other form of AI, maybe go back to its home. That is going to wrap up our move to actor node. Remember it needs an AI controller as a target and then a valid actor as a goal. All of these options are optional. By default, they're set up fairly well. And keep in mind, you can check and see the result once it fires off the initial navigation.